Do you wait for everything to be perfect and lined up straight before you make a choice? How hard are you trying to get everything in your life right? What if jumping in and getting messy is one of the ways to find out what works for you? Discover how being willing to mess up can create the phenomenal life you truly desire. Get ready to quit judging and start embracing all of your messy adventures. Now, here's your host, self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Messy Adventures in Living. I am your messy living expert host of this radio show, Katrina Fava. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for listening wherever and whenever you are in the world. Welcome to Messy Adventures in Living. Uh, if you've never been here before, I'll tell you a little bit about this show and what it is. Uh, messy Adventures in Living is an hour where you get invited to get messy with your choices, where you get invited to drop all of the right and wrong around choices. So what if there was no right choice? And what if there is no wrong choice? What if there is just choice? And what? how different would your life be if you were willing to mess up and if you were willing to make a choice before... Uh, and without waiting for all your ducks to be in a row and without waiting for all the lights to be green, how much are you waiting and how much are you stopping yourself uh, with the perfection of your choices that you're choosing? So on Messy Adventures in Living, you get invited to just make choices and then see what shows up. And then from there, choose again. And really based on the idea that choice is not permanent, Um, There is not one be-all and end-all choice, but you always have a new choice. Every 10 seconds, there's a new choice to be made. And that when you make a choice, if you don't like what shows up or or you don't like what gets created from that choice, you can always choose again. Uh, We have been led to believe or we've been taught that it's important to make the right choice and that once you make a choice, there's no turning back from that choice. And so here on Messy Adventures in Living, we challenge that. I challenge you to question that point of view. What if that's not true? What if there's always another choice? Uh, So that's a little bit about what Messy Adventures is. We talk about all kinds of things uh, on this show. Um, I'm Katrina. Here's a little bit about me and how I play in the world. I um, do and be a whole ton of things, and I'm always looking for (laughs) new things to be. I am a mom of three kids. They are 13 and 10 and 7, and they're amazing little buggers who are constantly pushing me, <laughs> constantly pushing me to choose more and be greater and showing me all the places where I'm limiting myself. I am incredibly super grateful to have them in my life. Sometimes uh, they make things uncomfortable for me, and that's great. I'm grateful for that. I am also a pediatric nurse here in the city of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I've been working at a hospital called Sickest Hospital for 20 years, and I've had the amazing privilege of working with families and kids who have really shown me different possibility with bodies, a different possibility with illness. Uh, And a lot of them have shown me what's possible when you don't make illness and body and disease and change in body significant. Um, And many of these kids have shown me that it is actually very possible to be happy um, no matter what's going on in your life and what's going on in your body. And again, incredibly grateful. Uh, I am also the owner of um, a company called Naturally Happy Body. I love to make my own um, 100% natural body products all by myself in my kitchen at home. Um, I don't cook or bake, but I make a lot of body products. Um, And that's uh, naturallyhappybody.com. You can find some more information there if you're interested in anything like that. I am an Access Consciousness Bars and Body Process Facilitator. Access Consciousness is a modality that I discovered about eight years ago. Uh, some hands-on energetic work and also some tools to create change in your life. Some of them we'll talk about a little bit today, most likely. And uh, what else? What else is important? Oh, I am an author. I've written, I've contributed chapters in three books. One of them is called Creation, Conscious, Con- Conscious Fer- Fertility, Conception, Pregnancy, and Birth. The other one is Possibilities in Parenting. I wrote a chapter about um, called Two Bucks for Bully Kids, which I think is really cool. And I also wrote a chapter in The Power of Releasing Judgment. You can find all of those on my website, katrinafava.com, and you can get them at Amazon. Okay, enough about me. Let's get to the show. So today I have an amazing guest on my show. Her name is Christine McIver, and the show for today is called Up Yours. Up Your Ask, that is. Up your ask. So what have you been unwilling to ask for? 
what have you, what are all your points of view about asking, asking for things? Have you grown up with the point of view that you shouldn't be asking for things, that you shouldn't be asking for too much, that you should be happy with what you have and you should be grateful? And that the more you ask, um, the less you'll receive or that it's selfish to ask um, because people have less and you should just be quiet and, you know, be happy with what you have. Uh, you know, what are all of your points of view about asking for things and how much is that stopping amazing magic from showing up in your life, um, amazing creations from showing up in your life? And also, is it possible that your refusal or your, like, your, your points of view about asking and your refusal to ask is not only, um, you know, is it possible that that's keeping everyone else in the world small? Is, is it possible that your refusal to ask for greater and greater things because you feel guilty about being selfish? What if that's actually stopping the entire world from changing? What if it's actually stopping the entire world from becoming greater? So um, my guest today is Christine McIver. She is a possibilities coach. Um, in, inspirational speaker, a TV personality on Inspire Choices TV, in case you didn't know that existed, there is Inspire Choices TV, um, a radio show host and owner of right here Inspire Choices Network, as well as an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator. Uh, Christine is, a highly, is highly successful at inspiring individuals and businesses to make choices that will bring them increased success, greater joy, self-confidence, and remarkable, inspiring change. Uh, Christine lives her life out loud. Yes, she does. And is a natural cheerleader, she is, who believes in the abilities of others to change their lives quickly and easily. I know this because she's my friend, creator of the program Beyond the BS Business Service series, Divorce with Dignity, and Be the Dominatrix of Your Life. She entices clients to show up more in their lives in their business and relationships than they have ever before, inviting them to make all that they once knew was possible, possible. Christine believes that you can be living and loving your life with ease. She's impacted thousands of individuals, both in Canada and abroad, with her enthusiastic message of possibilities. Her kind, direct, and joy-filled approach is both comforting and stretching. Yes. <laughs> Christine's infectious laughter, right there. You just got a little hint of it invites you into knowing that all things are possible beyond what is present in your life right now. And yes, how did I get so lucky to have her as my friend? <laughs> Welcome to Messy Adventures in Living again. Christina. Thank you, Patrina. <laughs> oh my God, I love the, the infusion when you reading. <laughs> you're just, like, you're just all nice you. I know these things are real, so I can say it with gusto. <laughs> I don't think anything so, better than that. Well, I, so I'm Christine, honored that you asked me. <laughs> of course. So Christine is the creator of um, this inspiring, life-changing thing called Up Your Ask. Up Your <laughs> Ask. Isn't that funny? A-S-K. If you know Christine. If you know Christine, you know this. she created this title. Up Your <laughs> Ask. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a program that um, invites people to get comfortable with asking why don't you talk about it and tell us exactly what it is because I know what it is but you could probably describe it better than me <laughs> well thank you I will <laughs> and you're you're part of it so you can tell me what mm. you're experiencing too which was very 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 cool um yeah. so this kind of came out of um I have a program a business program called the pleasure of business and I work with groups um, in in this program, and part of the program is is really stepping into creating greater with your businesses, right? So in that program, it would come, it would often come up, Petrina, to about asking, or pardon me, about receiving. So a lot of people would say to me, you know, I have a receiving problem. I have a receiving problem. I have a receiving problem because the abundance that they desire in their life, whether it's monetary abundance or it's emotional abundance with with lovers or family or their jobs or their businesses, were, was lacking. And so, you know, they would say this all the time and I'd be like, okay, what is this? Like, you know, it, it really was kind of... Um, standing out like a sore thumb to me. And and then I started to look at this and I'm like, you know what? What comes before receiving? <laughs> Asking. And so, you know, like in the Bible and everyone's heard this, especially through the law of attraction that's been, 
you know, so popular over the last century. It's like, ask and you shall receive. And when I really started to look at this and really started to work with my, my business clients on this, what I discovered was that people were really uncomfortable with asking, unaware of how to ask, um, had a lot of points of view around asking. And they really did not have cognitive knowledge on what it took to truly ask, which will then lead to abundantly receiving. Mm -hmm. So in that, I really started to dive into it. And as I would do, you know, I would do specific classes just on the asking. I went, you know, this is something that I think a lot of people would really love to have. And out of that was born this program called Up Your Ask. And this program, uh, you know, I rolled it out to the general public and I've had well over 100 people join the program. And what I've done is I've created a um, a Facebook uh, page where a group where we, we get together and every day for 100 days, I go on live, on Facebook Live, anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes, and the I call them the up your askers. <laughs> they, mm-hmm. they, they come in and they participate with the live program each day. And I really, it was, <laughs> talk about upping my own ask, because I'm like, okay, you literally just said you were going to do 100 days. Do you really, like, this is the, this is the monologue in my head. Do you really, Christine, have a hundred days of stuff to talk about about mm-hmm. this program? And I'm on, and then I'm like, well, damn it! <laughs> I said I'm doing it, so hold on to your hat. <laughs> We're gonna ride. And <laughs> yeah. nice. We are now at today is day yeah. ninety nine. In fact, I just finished <laughs> day ninety nine. Tomorrow is actually day one hundred of the hundred well, days of your ask. Well, this worked out well then. <laughs> Timing is over. Yeah. yeah. So it's been it's been wonderful. Like it's truly been um wonderful for me uh to really step into this topic and you know, this is not something that most people are truly looking at on such a deep, deep level. And I'm thrilled that the universe tapped on my shoulders and said Okay, MacIver, let's do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, yeah, and and I'm grateful that you did it too. <laughs> yeah, well, there's there's quite a few people that are, which is yeah. phenomenal. It's it you know it's really made me happy. And what I love about it, it's kind of like you know, Petrina, when we do the radio show. I mean, for for the listeners out there, we don't actually sit down and write out word for word what we're going to say. Um, mm-hmm. We we know how to follow the energy. You're you're brilliant at this, Petrina following the energy with bodies. Uh, if people don't know, Petrina has a lot of capacities and my body is grateful for her capacity with bodies because that girl, she can read a body like I can read a book. I'm telling you, it's phenomenal. Oh you're giving me blush. Thank Excellent. you. I like bodies. Hey, you, you're, you've got an amazing connection to bodies. So um, you can read energy with bodies and we've learned to read the energy when we're actually doing a radio show, right? And we we mm-hmm. literally go where the energy asks us to go. I mean, we have point, points that we definitely want to cover, but, but we yeah. definitely read the energy. And that's actually what I've been doing with the Up Your Ask. And I ask all of the time what it wants me to convey. And it has, it has, like, oh my God, infused me with so much new awareness, with so many new tools that have really, it's changed my world for me. And mm-hmm. from from the perspective of many of the people participating, it, it's made a huge impact for them. So I am super, super grateful for this creation coming through me. So am I. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, this, like the same, this, this concept is not really new to me either. And I think... Um, probably about eight or nine years ago now, I think I had read The Secret and started to really look at this thing about asking, shall receive. And um, so 
And then, you know, some of the work with access consciousness is all about asking questions and asking and receiving. Mm -hmm. And then when I started to do this with you, I was actually pretty amazed at some of the stuff that was coming up for me around asking and all the places that I was unwilling to ask because I thought I was had, you know, I was like, I think I'm getting pretty good at this asking stuff. And then it's really interesting um, over the last 100 days how much very weird stuff has come up around asking. And I'd really like to delve into that after we come back awesome. from this break. Yeah. So you are listening to Messy Adventures in Living. Today, our show is Up Yours. Up Your Ask, that is, with Christine Tyver. I'm just going to like saying that over the next hour. I'm going to say it as much as I can because it's silly. <laughs> <laughs> Not that your silliness is rubbing off on me or anything. So you're crazy if you leave. We are going to take a commercial break and we will be right do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 Central, 9 Mountain, and 8 Pacific on the InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question, always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? beingyouclass.com You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255 In Canada, 613-800-8736 Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living. I am your host, Petrina Fava, just like the announcer lady said. Um, <laughs> today, our show is Up Yours, Up Your Ask, that is. So what, what have you been unwilling to ask for? Are you willing to ask? for everything that you desire or everything that you don't even know you desire yet, are you willing to ask for the greatness of your life? And if you're not, let's clear some of that junk, shall we? So, Mm -hmm. um, Christine, we're talking with Christine McIver. She's my guest today. She is the creator of App Your Ask, um, a program where you can join a Facebook live chat and uh, record your asks in your journal and then talk about what comes up and also what's showing up for you. So I want to talk a little bit about something. So when I, again, when I first started to look at this idea of ask, ask, and you shall receive, I had been reading The Secret. And I, it was uh, eight or nine years ago, I was learning Reiki. And then I took a course with this um, the Reiki master also about manifesting. And I remember I had this question always coming up. And it was this. It was, I learned that you need to ask and then let go of the outcome. Right? I was learning this concept, ask, and then you need to totally let go of the outcome. And I was just mind boggled by this. I was like, I don't know how to do that. And so I would try and, and ask for things. And then, and at the time, I had just had a miscarriage. I was trying to get pregnant again. And so this was my big old ask, right? It was like, I'm mm-hmm. asking the universe for a baby boy. Like, hello, we're not starting with small potatoes over here. So I kept asking my teacher, like, 
how in God's name do I let go of the outcome and be willing to not have this thing that I'm asking for? Um, right. And it was really confusing for a long time. And then I learned a little bit about access. And um, it was, uh, again, right after I'd had a miscarriage, my brother introduced me to it. And he said to me, I remember the moment, he's like, okay, you need to ask. And then, but asking is not about an answer. And I was like, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm a nurse and I like the scientific process and of course it's about an answer and what's the point of asking if there's no answer so you know and but, and so now I've kind of come to understand actually I see how much when I energetically ask for something like I look at all the things that have shown up in my life with incredible ease and I, I ask for more of that it's like whatever created that I'll have more of that so can right. you talk a little bit about like this whole idea of not making it the answer, like not making it significant. So asking and then also being willing not to have it or that right. whole, <laughs> that whole really that little big thing. piece, if that you know piece me, that, that no kicks us. This radio yeah, show. no, yeah. it's all good. Well, okay. So <laughs> all of the Sorry. energy that's coming at me right now, like holy moly, uh, <laughs> just awareness of energies. So, okay. So I'm going to break a myth. And there's a lot of people out yeah. there that might disagree with me, but this is my point of view. When you ask, you're absolutely going to have skin in the game to want it to show up the way you want it to show up. Sure. Okay? You're going to. You're going to. Get over mm -hmm. it. You're going to. So to, to to say to somebody you have to give up the way that it shows up, it's kind of like saying, don't think about ice cream, don't think about ice cream, don't think about ice cream. What do you right. think about ice cream? And all you're thinking about is ice cream. Exactly. So yeah. we put it in front of it. It's like putting candy in front of a child and say you can't have it. And it's like, wait a second, that's what I'm asking for. Why can't I have it? Right? Because we know in this reality, ask and you shall receive is there. So why can't I have skin in the game? Okay? So that's the first piece. <laughs> the second piece to this is that most people, okay, I would say 99.9% .9 of people out there, they will put an ask out and they will actually shortchange themselves in what mm -hmm. they believe they deserve to receive. Ah, uh, deserve. Okay. There's that word. <laughs> yeah, deserve to receive, right? Mm -hmm. So we've mm -hmm. got, we put it out there. So if, if, if you said, if one of your asks was, I would love a new gorgeous red sports car, two-door with a sunroof and, um, you know, got 20 miles to the gallon, right? And it had a sexy stereo system and that I looked like incredible hot in, right? Mm -hmm. So you define it so much and mm -hmm. the universe says, the, the universe literally gets the vibration of your ask, gets the energy of your ask and then what you start to do is instead of it being, oh, my God, there's so many possibilities of how we can deliver that to Petrina. Right. And then the minute that the second, the millisecond that you come in with, I want it to be red. I want it to be Tudor. I want it to be this. I want it to be that. You start to cut down the possibilities. So you start to narrow the field on what's available to you. Okay, so you got that? Yep. So that's that's number two. And then number three is, okay, so we had a gorgeous, sexy silver car for Petrina that was actually going to be something she was going to win in that lottery that she enters <laughs> once a month and or once a year. And, and it was going to come with 25 miles to the gallon. And it was going to have a sunroof and a flip top and a blah, blah, blah. Like I'm making this shit up, but right? Mm -hmm. But it was going to be greater, but she's just narrowed it. Okay? So when she narrows it, then it's like pushing the possibility through a, a, a keyhole, right? Because the universe had this thing so lined up it's like two steps from you and the minute we start to put skin in the game and we start to have an expectation of how it has to show up then it becomes there's 55 steps to get it to us and during those 55 steps right which 55 steps logically to your mind is going to take longer yes 
And okay. during that time, we go every day. Well, the damn car hasn't shown up. Well, I guess I suck Wait. at asking. This is bullshit. I okay. should just go back to working my ass off and just not expect more than what I actually can pay for. And then what happens to your energy? What happens to your vibration, Petrina? It oh, goes... It, it's, yeah, it goes blip. And then you go, <laughs> you know what? There isn't greater possibilities. The universe doesn't have my back. I suck at this. And we go into self-judgment. And then the universe is like, seriously, did she just close the line to receiving? Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, we ha- the car's already on the truck being delivered to the to the dealership, and she just closed the the funnel to receiving. You get it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Cool, cool, yeah. So, so it sounds like there's a ton of judgment going on here, and, like, judgment of what is the best. Yeah. Um, and, and you know how when you're a kid, or not when you're a kid, but you know how, like, children's programs always say how you – um, your imagination is limitless. Yes. I actually don't agree with that. I think your imagination is actually limited. And I and so I think when you when you imagine something that's the best, it can be a limitation. Is that is that kind of what you're saying? Because there's okay, always yes. a greater possibility. There's always a greater like you said, the universe is like, well wait, we had the silver thing with the top down and the this, but she just asked for this yeah. because maybe in so, your mind that's how so you find a- the best possible thing. Right. Your imagination Mm -hmm. is in your brain. Your brain is a computer Mm -hmm. system that's been programmed. It's been programmed by by your experiences. It's been programmed by the things that you see and taste and touch and and, and all of that. So when you, you reach into your imagination, yeah, sometimes you can go beyond that, but that's not the usual. The usual is you go back to the old file, the old thing that was programmed there. Okay? And what what is limitless, if we allow ourselves to have this, is curiosity. So the oh, curiosity, okay. right, the curiosity of a child is what we desire to have. When we have the curiosity, we touch things, we taste things, we poke things, we, we play with things, we smell things, we lick things, we, we put them on us, we, we throw them against the wall. We're like, what is this? And we step into, right, like look at all of the great inventors of the world. They invented out of curiosity. And they, maybe as they began to invent out of curiosity, they had a possibility of what could be created. But how many of those great inventors created things out of, quote unquote, accidents? It was Mm -hmm. their curiosity of going, what if I touch this? What happens? And what if I do this? And what if I do this? Right? It's the curiosity that creates greater, not the imagination. Mm-hmm. Right. The imagination is kind of it's kind of the the fuel to keep things moving. It's when you start you you go oh my god right look right at, look at this oh what if what if it could be this? Yeah, yeah. I love that curiosity is limitless. That's what it is. It's not necessarily imagination, but curiosity definitely is limitless because if you are always asking questions, then there will always be endless possibilities. I like right. it. Think of think of your children, right? Think of a child mm-hmm. that comes to you and says, Mommy, I was just wondering, is, is this possible? Like, I'm just kind of curious. Mm-hmm. Could we do yeah. this? And you're like, no, right? right? And how many times do we buy this reality no? And then we get in line with what to expect. Mm-hmm. We get in line with the conclusions. Mm-hmm. We get in line with this is the only yeah. way you get to receive. And guess what we do? We shut off asking. How many right. times How many times were you told no by this reality? Yeah. Whether it was your parents, whether it was teachers, mm-hmm. whether it was lovers, whether it was, you know, anything. How many times yeah. were you told no? And then you yeah, finally and, just threw your hands in the air and went, fine. Right. That's just the way it is. Yeah, I'm so aware of that um, right now, especially having little kids. Again, smart little buggers they are, eh? Putting all this stuff <laughs> in my face so that I can then parent them this way. <laughs> I know, <laughs> or I know what you guys I think they're parenting us. And Do you I know how much it. I learned? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> how much I learned from your kids through your radio show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, God, well, they did it again. I think that's what kids, Yeah. So I, actually the other 
day, Matthew asked me for something, Matthew 7, <clears throat> but with all of this stuff about asking, I've been hyper aware of my response to my kids when they ask for something. And so um, and I've changed instead of saying, like, no, sorry, stop asking, because often, you know, kids will ask repeatedly, right? It's like, can I have this? No. 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 Like, how many times do I have to say no? And so I've caught myself a few times saying, look, like, my answer is no. Stop asking me. Oh. And so the other day, Matthew asked me for something and I don't remember. And so, of course, this is not about, like, I'm not willing to just give my kids every single thing they ask for. But just because I'm not willing to give it to them doesn't mean they can't have it. So what I started right. doing now is he asked me for something. I wish I could remember what it was. And I said, look, Matthew, I'm sorry. I'm not willing to do that for you, but I wonder how else you could get it. Awesome. Because because then at least it puts it in his world. It's like, well. And and we were in public. I was like, maybe you could ask that stranger to do that for you. And and it, and he was, like, horrified. He was like, why would I do that? But, <laughs> but at least it's not, it's not like a stop asking. The answer is no. And And, like, how often have we said to our kids, you know, sometimes you can't have what, everything you want can't always get what you want. What so, a lie! Like, thank you for all of this because it's been very much in my awareness about how I respond to my children. And like, even though I might not be willing to do everything they ask or give them everything they ask, I can at least now put it in their world that even though I'm not willing, there could be another way to get it. Right. And Katrina, yeah. how many adults have you actually heard saying, well, you can't have everything you ask for. You can't get everything you ask oh. for. Well, you know, you should just be grateful. You should just be grateful. And the universe is like, seriously, there's an unlimited amount of abundance in the world. Ask. Yeah. Yeah. I did a radio show way back, like at the beginning when Messy Adventures just started. I think it was October, maybe, 2016. I don't remember. And it was called, I don't remember, (laughs) um, The Fisherman's Wife. Something like that. And, yes, I remember and I don't that. Know if you remember it? Do you remember? It was a yeah. record that I swear I remember listening. It was like a 12 inch vinyl. I'm dating myself now. And I used to listen to it by myself in my room and like yeah. on my little record player. And I'm not sure why, but I think I know why now. But I always was so like engrossed in that story and curious about that story. And it was about a fisherman who whose uh, wife, oh, oh no, the fisherman caught like a magical fish who could talk and could grant wishes. And so he went back and, and they were born, they lived in a shack. And so the wife of the fish said, if you throw me back, I'll grant you whatever you want. And the fisherman said, oh my God, like I met a magical fish. That's good enough for me. Just go back. And then he went home and his wife's like, you idiot. Why didn't you ask for something? Go back and like ask look at his house, ask him for something better. And so he did and she was never... She was always asking for more, always asking for more. So the fisherman had to go back and forth. And finally, in the end, she got nothing because she was asking for too much. And that wow. story was just glued to my memory. Like, I'm sure I was five or something when I listened to this. And I've just always been so curious. But if anyone doesn't know about it, I'm pretty sure it's called The Fisherman's... No, I don't know now. The Fisherman's Wife. Yeah, uh, or I think something. I, I, I story, totally... I, I totally remember you, you doing can it. Find the story. Like I, I actually read some of it. I think on the show, but you can actually find the story, and it, it's fascinating to read it and to be aware of the energy that comes up when you're reading it. It's craziness, but we learn. Like if you ask for too much, you're going to get nothing. You know? <laughs> Isn't nothing. that crazy? What yeah, the lies that we have bought into? Yeah, because it's it's based on the idea that there's, like you just said, a limited amount of stuff in the universe. And it's like, is that really true? How can there be a limited amount? How can there be the universe is abundant? Okay, we need to take a break. So (laughs) you're listening to Up Yours. Up your ass, that is, on Messy Adventures in Living. Today we are speaking with Christine McIver, and we are going to be right back after this break. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Petrina Fava every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 Central 
nine mountain, and eight pacific of the inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions? Or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living. I'm your host, Petrina Fava. Today, my guest is Christine McIver, and our show is called Up Yours. Up your ask, that is. We're talking all about asking and receiving and all of the limitations that you might have around asking and what's stopping you from asking for everything and anything and the greatest possibility for your life. So before we went to break, we were talking about um, a show that I did October the 19th, 2015. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thanks, Christine. She is not only my guest, but also my producer. And so she's doing <laughs> background work here, um, finding, looking things up. Um, so we're talking about um, a story that I used to listen to when I was a kid called the fisherman's wife, and it's about a greedy woman who just kept asking this enchanted fish for more and more and more. And in the end, she was not not happy, and so she ended up with nothing. And um, honestly, read it if you can. I don't know, man. I, for me, the energy is just crazy. The um, mm, I guess we can maybe I'll we'll post the link to the story in the uh, in the um, replay in the show in the replay in of the, the show. show. Yeah. yeah, we'll do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 check that out. I'll post it because it's really. I don't know. I think it's crazy cool. So before we get to break, we were talking about this whole thing about asking for too much and then getting nothing. And you mentioned the word deserving a few times. And I'd like to kind of go there a little bit. I noticed um, during one of the one of your like one of the live calls, or yeah. I was in my my list one day, and I asked and I wrote down that I um, would like a new car. And as soon as I wrote that down, I was like. Oh, but I just bought a new car two years ago. How dare I ask for a new car? Oh, and I was like, wow. What? Who said that? Like, <laughs> and I loved it. I was like, oh, my God, look at that. Like, why can't I have another car? So what if I bought a car two years ago? Because previously we were driving like a 100-year-old minivan that we drove into the ground. So surely a two-year-old car is like, you know. So, again, like how – I don't deserve a new car, or why should I ask so Petrina, a new car? I have a new car, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> so what came up in your, your in your mind when, you know, right after you had that ask? What, what came up in your mind? So after I asked for the car? Yeah, what were some of the thoughts when you got shocked? It was like, it was like oh, how dare you? How dare I ask for a car? That's so so like, um, and not selfish is not the right word, but it's like, you know, there's people who don't even have a car. Like, how could you ask for a car? Right. Like, so that is, is, that is the energy. judgment. That's what it was. That is the judgment of um, greed and you're being yeah. greedy and you should be satisfied. Yeah. Right. So we have been taught and it's different for everybody, but we've been taught at what our level of receiving should be. Okay, so we've been taught, you know, so if you were had, if you were somebody that had, let's say your parents grew up in the depression, 
or during the Second World War, which mine, mine were, right, because I'm the youngest of a very large family. And so there was a level um, that they were taught from their family around, hey, you've got 100 bushels. Nobody down this road has more than 50. You, that's yeah. enough. You yeah. should be grateful, right? And when we were in times when there was li- literally rations of things, I get it. I get it when, you know, now people often said to me, was there enough food to feed your family? You know what? We always had way more food. We always had extra people at our dinner table. It was always abundance in food, okay? Now, my my parents might have felt like they were always trying to make sure there was abundance, but there that was my experience. I was never told, don't, don't eat so much. Never, ever, ever. But if you were somebody that was actually growing up during the depression, if you were somebody that was growing up, you would have, that would have made quote unquote sense that we don't have enough around the table. And so when you were trying to make ends meet, right? (laughs) Ends, ends meet actually Mm -hmm. meant, I know how much you have and how much you meet, how much you require meet in the middle. When you were trying to make ends meet, Right. When you were trying to actually have them match up and meet, touch each other, then that so makes sense. But here we are. We are in a amazing, prosperous world. You and I live in Canada, one of the most the richest countries in the world. But above all of that, no matter where you live, we are living in a time when we absolutely positively know that anything is truly possible. So when we are coming from the energy of um, the way that our parents used to do it, right? When we're coming from that energy of, you know what, you should be satisfied. That's how we've got a limit. We've got a ceiling on our receiving. Therefore, we put we automatically put that ceiling in on our asking. Yes. And, so, and you know what I'm so aware of too is when you're putting that, like, um, this energy of you have a hunt and nobody else does, so you should just shut up and be grateful because you have more than anyone else. It, there's like it's like in, an attempt at kindness to others, but it's actually not because now you're limiting everybody for having from having something greater just because you're perpetuating that energy. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. And the thing is, mm-hmm. is that you're going around with a ruler. You're measuring how much you get to have, and then you're looking at somebody else, and you're you're measuring what they have, right? Yeah. It doesn't create greater in the world for all of us to no. be measuring and judging. It actually limits the possibilities, yeah. right? Yeah. You and I, you and I have greater possibilities. We've had greater choices, greater opportunities. We have had an abundance of possibilities in our lives compared to the generation before us and so on and so on and the only reason that things continue to expand is because someone someone decided more was possible yeah so if you and i just if you and i choose to step into greater that we choose to know that the world is so massively abundant and we don't buy the lies. We don't buy the lie of lack. And we're willing to literally ask and know like we know like we know one billion trillion godzillion percent that the universe absolutely desires to gift to us greater than we've ever had. And we're willing to receive it even if it comes wrapped up in crappy crap, right? Whatever. If we are so, so willing to receive on every single level and we don't have a point of view about it, it's like, cool. How much fun is that? I was going, I went for a big walk today. I want to tell you this piece, right? So I went for a big walk today and I was just loving him. You know, I'm in a new area and I'm I'm really in the curiosity and in, in discovering my new environment. And I'm walking Petrina through these really lovely areas and I'm really I cat I took a ton of pictures. And I'm like taking pictures of flowers, but I'm also taking pictures of weeds. Mm. Right? They're beautiful in abundance. And then I came across this one weed and I'm like, Wow, that height of that weed that was the exact weed that was on my front lawn and I thought it was ugly and I pulled it 
call. <laughs> right? And so, I, so I'm like, I'm walking out in this beautiful world where there is abundance. And my point of view uh, with it on my front lawn was it was ugly, it was a weed. But in this environment, the universe and, the, and nature doesn't have a point of view. It's it's willing to be abundant with it all, and it creates amazingness when we allow it to contribute. But how much are we trying to control everything, which limits the possibility of something new? It's the adjustment of what the best is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and, yes. I, and I feel like it's like, oh, this my God, this this would be amazing. It's the greatest thing I can think of. But guess what? There's more. There's more beyond what you suggest you can imagine. There is more. And wouldn't it be cool to have that? Yeah. And and so what's really, really cool is, and this is something that I absolutely learned from the law of attraction, which pissed me off. Sorry. (laughs) Which made me mad at first. And then I really get it now. I get it now on such a greater level. And I'm, my receiving has changed so dramatically over the last year. As you know, I've created some things that I never even imagined I would create. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and, and the thing that (laughs) you are. I'm sitting on one, but that's an instant. That's that's another story. (laughs) But, um, what what I learned from the, the the law of attraction and Abraham Hicks, is, you know, those are other modalities that I've I've tapped into, and what what they have said, which was is amazing, is we will always desire greater, and if we are actually willing to ask and receive greater, we will always desire greater. So. In this reality saying is, this reality would say you're never satisfied. You're right. Okay? But if if we always desire greater, how many greater possibilities can we actually step into and be with and create and and cr- bring to the world to feed people that are hungry, to create more amazing music, to paint the paintings that have never been painted before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what if your your desire, you know, like what if this thing that you're calling your desire for more, which it is, but what if it's also something else? Like what if it's also an awareness that there actually is more? You you desire more because you know there's more, right? right? And yeah, and you know that there's more that can be created in the world. And why shouldn't you ask for it? And actually, you know, how much of an unkindness is and it receive it? And yeah, and yeah, and receive it. it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! What are, what are some of the um, cool things that you've heard from some of your up your askers? Tell me a little bit about. That, oh my um, gosh! Some of the cool things that they have created. Oh, people have created people gifting them money uh, completely out of the blue. With and and what's very cool about this is their willingness to receive without obligation has has mm-hmm. changed their reality. Has completely changed their reality. People have have um created greater in their businesses people have been been gone on trips they never even imagined people have um one person i think created like five thousand dollars in one day in their business i mean people you know the the joy what they've created in relationships has changed like the what we have stripped away and what people, all of the tools, like a hundred days of tools, and and people are like, you know, just willing. Their willingness has up so much. Uh, their willingness to ask, their their muscle of asking, because that's the big piece here, right? Most people, mm-hmm. Petrina, what I discovered is most people ask for about five to ten things in their life, like in their life. I know. But like a conscious ask, okay? Now, here's the thing. We're always asking. We're always in the energy of ask. We are just, it's mm-hmm. kind of like getting in a car, but getting in the back seat, starting the car and putting putting a, a, a brick on the gas, a brick on the gas yeah. and like just letting it go wherever, yeah. right? That's, That's the true. energy of fine, what, Kind of like the energy of the ask comes up and then you're like, nope, no, I shouldn't, nope. And it's like it comes up and you're like, nope, 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 <laughs> don't ask. Don't I, yeah, but yeah. but we are we are always energetically asking. Yes. 
Right. And then like we wake up in the morning and right. We wake up in the morning and our bodies ask for pleasure. And then we go, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that would be because I didn't have any pleasure yesterday and I never have pleasure with my body. This is just the way it is. And I just need to shut up and take some more Tylenol. Like, whoa. Right? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, that was really funny. (laughs) But but that that voice again. (laughs) (laughs) But we we're not willing we're not willing to exercise um, that muscle of of asking and and asking from the space of um, curiosity of asking from the space of you know what. What if something shows up that I've never even imagined is possible? Yeah, and, and those are the freaking best ones. All like I love that excitement of like, ah, this I never imagined this. Okay, yeah, yeah thanks. Like I like this. This is awesome. Yeah, beyond yeah. your imagination. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. um, for me, what you know, you know, um, what do they say? Uh, teachers teach. Be, teachers. I don't know what that saying is. Like, there's a there's a not so kind saying where it's like teachers teach because they can't do or whatever. Oh, and, those and, who cannot do, those who cannot do teach. I think it's right. Something like that. Yeah. Right. Well, what I find is when I create things, when I start to step into them, I'm I'm actually one of the the participants in experiencing the creation in the moments as well. And for me. And, you know, some of the asks that have that I was not I did not have the image of what it was going to be, but I was willing to ask for greater. What showed up is that sexy new car that I have that I would have Mm -hmm. never imagined me in that. Like I've seen lots of sexy cars, but I was like, oh, my God, when I got into that car and I started to drive it and I mean the feel of it and the look of it, it just Mm -hmm. it blew my mind. And th- this yeah. is from a girl. This is from a girl that's had cars blow up on her while she was driving mm-hmm. it, not blow up, but mm-hmm. the engine blow. And my family used yeah. to pray that I would marry a mechanic because I. Would, and now I drive a brand new, gorgeous yeah. sports car. And then my right. home, the beautiful home that I have, that I thought I was going to go into a less than. And right. this home has blown my mind because mm-hmm. I was willing to ask for greater. So where are you not willing to ask for greater that every cell of your body is screaming, please ask for greater, and somewhere between the skull <laughs> in your head, you've decided you can't have it. Yeah. Would you be willing to change that now? Would you really, really, really be willing to play with the possibilities that you actually can receive greater if you would only, only just ask? Um, I just want to say too, what I noticed is like with the the willingness to ask for things that you can can't possibly imagine is also that like when that thing shows up for so for me anyways, when something like that shows up, then you're like, of course I'm going to receive it. I asked for it. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I can explain that energy exactly, but it's like. It, like how many times have we asked for things and then they show up and then we said no to them? Do you know what I mean? And so now yes. with these, in doing these these hundred days of asking for me, when it's shown up, no matter what it is, it's like like sometimes I I there's been a few things where I've gone to say no to them, just like little tiny things, yes. and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I asked for that. <laughs> yes, right. I have it. Yeah. Right, because we have this automatic belief that we don't deserve it. It's it's so in inbred in us. It's it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. So in the asking, I think it is is for me. It's been more of an invitation to choose it when it shows up. Because I've heard. Nice. Okay. What are we doing? We have very little time. Can you tell us what's <laughs> coming next after your up up your ask? Uh, I'm not sure. There might be something okay. about receiving. There's Check definitely yeah. playing one on one, and uh, oh, there's going to be a book. We're creating a book. I can't wait for it to be in the world. <laughs> Okay, bye, everybody. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you for listening to Messy Adventures and Living. Join us again next week when we will have more shenanigans. Thanks for playing with us on Messy Adventures and Living. Katrina Fava will return next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central, 
9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on Inspired Choices Network. We'd love to have you join us again. Until next time, have fun creating your phenomenal life. Mess and all.